Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Thomas, and welcome to Lang Park and Wide World of Sports coverage of the 1991 State of Origin Series. And as per usual, Lang Park is absolutely packed to the rafters. A crowd here of approximately 31,000. They'll be screaming for the Maroons. New South Wales have their supporters. They'll be screaming too. But you can get on with me, Andrew Slack. I don't think they'll be hearing them. Well, what about this match tonight? Well, I guess the question marks are in the forward pack for Queensland. Three newcomers, and that's 50%. Jackson, OK, has had a, a berth as, as a reserve. Larson and McLean, their first up origin match. I think that's a worry, particularly with not a weakness in sight in the New South Wales side. I reckon in previous years, there's been one or two just haven't measured up. 15 out of the 17 are Kangaroos. O'Connor and Roberts, fair players who didn't go on the last tour. So I think Queensland have their work cut out, but uh, they'll give it everything they've got. Certainly for the first 20 minutes, half an hour after that, that will be the telling time. You're going for New South Wales? Yeah, 10 points, I reckon. All right, I'm going for Queensland by two, and what's a tight game? Let's go to the sideline and hear Sean Lawson. Thanks, Alan. With me is Gene Miles. He'll be with us for the entire coverage tonight. Do you know, 31,000 people must be a great boost for the Queensland side. Yeah, it certainly is, Sean. It's a, it's a great advantage to the Queensland guys, and I just hope that it'll help these, uh, the guys that make from there, the boot, just get over those early, early game blues. A lot of the talk has been about this big New South Wales pack. Does Queensland have the firepower to match them? Well, I think it's, uh, it's, it's very important that we do meet them on the advantage line and uh, don't let them get any momentum up because, you know, when, when you've got Roach and Seward and a guy coming at you, these guys can create havoc. So uh, I think it's very important we meet them on the advantage line and sit them on their backsides. What about the new guys, Larson and McLean? How would they be feeling right now, just minutes before the kickoff? Well, I'm sure they'd be very nervous. And, um, you know, I think it's very important for them to get involved in the game very early, even if they just tuck the ball up in the, under their arm and take it up and cop a, a, cop a good tackle. And, uh, you know, that'll introduce them to state of origin football and, and maybe lose a few of those uh, early nerves. Let's hope they don't have too many. OK, back to you, Alan. Well, Winfield State of Origin, talk about nerves, Andrew Slack. What about the boys in the dressing room uh, waiting to come out? The Queensland side, Andrew G. He's expected, I suppose, Andrew, to make about 40 tackles here tonight. Yes, and I don't think he'll disappoint. Of course, he's another one who hasn't had a start in an origin match. He's uh, been reserved twice. But this is a crucial time for, for Queensland. I think their great plus is Coach Graham Lowe. Just sitting back there, as you can see, not saying much, but he has a lot of nous. He's got a lot of respect from the players. A great benefit that he's come into the Queensland side. Artie Beetson did a wonderful job. Nobody would deny it. I think it's a good move, Graham Lowe. Now into the New South Wales shed. And there's a man who missed that kangaroo too with injury, Ian Roberts. Mark Guy. Now he little will play fellow, a big yeah, Tiny Tim. Only a little fellow. There's big Dave Gillespie in the background. And uh, Mark Guy looks as though he's got concentration written all over his face. And what a good team it is, the New South Wales side. Tim Sheen's just laying down the... I suppose the final details as we look at the New South Wales side with Greg Alexander at fullback. Um, as we look now at the uh, New South Wales side. He likes to play at half, but gifted Greg Alexander will still be potent at fullback. On one wing, the man with a super sidestep, Michael O'Connor. Making up the centres, Canberra's kid international, Laurie Daly. Partnered by a sensationally informed Andrew Eddinghausen. On the other wing, the ever-reliable Chris Johns. Marking the King Wally Lewis is the brilliantly unpredictable Cliff Lyons. At half, the game's best yardage gainer, Ricky Stewart. Jack of all trades and tireless worker, Des Hasler, is lock. The second row features mountains of men, Paul Sirinan, and another giant, the fearsome Mark Dyer. The front row is made up of a tough, colourful veteran, Steve Roach. The clever, scheming hooker and captain, Benny Elias, with the third man in the engine room punishing Ian Roberts. The reserves are Glenn Lazarus, David Gillespie, Mark McGaw and Brad Fittler. And making his debut as New South Wales coach, Tim Sheens. Well, back here at Lang Park, the band getting ready. I'm just wondering what, uh, what goes through the band's mind as well as the players as we have a look at the Maroon side for this first Winfield State of Origin match here tonight at Lang Park. Replacing the injured Gary Bulcher, the 20-year-old giant Paul Hoff. On one wing, ready to strike form, bruising Michael Hancock. In the centres, now back to his best, Peter Jackson. Without peer as the most damaging centre in the game, veteran Mal Meninga. Willie Kahn is on the other flank. After a turbulent 12 months, Wally Lewis, the genius, is set to play his 29th State of Origin match. The form player of the Sydney Premiership, Alan Langer, is the half. 
the pack is made up of Gary Larson and Locke making his state of origin debut. In the second row, workaholic Andrew G, partnered by Newcastle's Mike McLean, also making his debut, along with front rower Steve Jackson. Steve Waters replaces suspended brother Keredit Hooker, while seasoned Martin Bella has a ton of responsibility to give the forwards authority. Reserves are Steve Renoff, Gary Coyne, Gavin Allen and Kevin Walters. And for the first time, Queensland have called on an outsider to coach the team. Ex-Kiwi and now manly boss, Graham Lowe. The referee for tonight's match is Bill Harrigan from New South Wales. Well, there are the combatants, and to get uh, Gene Miles' opinion on both sides, it's down to Sean Wilson. Thanks, Alan. Do you know it's a very inexperienced side for the Queensland? Yeah, it sure is, but, uh, you know, I think they can make that up in uh, just a lot of hard work. I, I think, uh, you know, with Andrew G leading the way in the tackle department, I think it's important that the other guys follow him. And, you know, I, I think a, a very important part is that, that they lock the ball up from the New South Wales guys because, you know, the, the, there is Roberts, Roach, Siren and Guy. They can all get good balls away. And Desi Hazel looming in around there and also Elias. It can be very dangerous. So it's important that we uh, do two and three man tackles early in this match. And 11 players from the Kangaroo Tour as well. So they have got their teamwork together, haven't they? Yeah, they sure have. That's probably where they had the edge on us. So, uh, they spent three months together. And, uh, you know, they played the city city country matches um, two weeks ago. So maybe they might have a little bit of teamwork. Um, Queensland's over. strength is obviously their back line. Yeah, it sure is. Um, I'm sure it is. If, if, we can hold, um, if we can hold them in the forwards and, and match them, you know, just, just keep them from getting over that advantage. Right? I'm pretty sure we've got the back line to, uh, to even match, even get over the top of New South Wales. Let's hope so, Juno. Back to you, Alan. We'll take this commercial break and then be back in a moment. Approximately 18 minutes to the kickoff here at Lang Park. And Andrew Slack, what about the betting on this match? I mean, bookmakers saying they're five to two on, three to one on chances. I mean, Bold Promise was five to two on on Monday and scrambled home. Yes, and the Blues haven't got Mick Dittman with them, have they? No. And, uh, no, I think the the point is with the teams on paper, they need must be favourites. Who wants to designate whether they're three to one on, ten to one on, or even money? I don't know. Football games, as most people experienced with them know, are 50 50 jobs from kickoff. And that's what the Queenslanders and I'm sure Graham Lowe will be hitting home. The bets don't matter. At the end of the day, it's the way they perform. What about uh, what about Elias's big three L's? Lang, Park, Lewis, Langer, the three L factor. Well, I, I think he's, he's got it in three, but obviously there's going to be a few more keys. That Lang Park, as Tim Sheens, I think, brought up quite sensibly through the week, the New South Wales players are now more used to playing here because of the Broncos' involvement in the New South Wales League. So it's not the big uh, bugbear that perhaps it has been in the past. State of origin, admittedly, a little bit of a different night. Langer in outstanding form. He'll have to be watched. Wally Lewis, well, that, I said earlier, the question mark was over the fact there's a big one over the King as well today. Yes, he really has to perform tonight, Wally. He uh, hasn't had the best of luck with injuries, but he's back tonight as captain of Queensland, and I'm sure it'll bring out the best in him tonight. In fact, he looks like, looks, uh, like he might only get one chance, Andrew. If he doesn't perform tonight, he might not be in the second team, so the pressure is definitely on Wally Lewis here tonight. Well, let's have a look uh, from a Southerner's point of view from the uh, State of Origin preview with Kenny Sutton. Welcome back to Lang Park. The tossing of the coin, Wally throws her up, and down she comes. And let's see who has won the toss. I think Benny Elias has got it. Yes, he has. He's making a decision on what he's going to do. He'll probably run with the ball. So uh, first blood to New South Wales here at Lang Park tonight. Maybe it's an omen for um, New South Wales. Maybe not. There's plenty of hinges on this one. And the crowd is going to make a lot of the difference in what happens out there tonight. You know, when the teams were announced, there was unanimous agreement that the New South Wales pack was bigger and more experienced than Queensland's. In the front row, though, reputations will count for nothing when the whistle blows for the kickoff in just a few minutes' time. The crowd expect fireworks from the big man, and even though clubmate will be playing against clubmate, no quarter will be given. Here's what Ian Roberts says about his manly clubmate, Martin Bella. Um, look, I've got the fullest respect for Marty, but he, he's playing for Queensland now, so <laughs> I, you know, I've, I've, got, I've got no pity for him. Yeah, we're both pretty rational human beings, but uh, he's wearing a different coloured jersey, so that's his bad luck. Yeah, it's going to be hard, you know, at uh, Lang Park it's always hard, no matter who's playing, but uh, the people who are, who are riding, riding us as favourites, it's going to be a hard confrontation and uh, certainly looking forward to it. We're not going to worry what they're going to say. You know, we'll go into the game thinking about our game, worry about our own backyard, don't worry about what anyone says. As long as we do our job, we play 100%, and I think we'll come away to win. There must be a time when you think, well, I've got to soften him up and stamp my authority now. 
Yeah, well, there's all that, you know, always that adrenaline rush, and uh, and because the game's so intense, players are always that, that much more excitable. Um, obviously, you know, that confrontation does come up in a game, but um, uh, it's only once or twice, and, and if you get your chance, well, yeah, sure, you get a hit on or a crack. Well, a man who knows what a forward battle is all about is down on the sideline tonight. Gavin Miller, what do you think of what the boys just said there? Well, thanks, Ken. I expect New South Wales, led by Ben Elias, to dominate up front. I think they'll lay the foundation for Cliff Lyons and his outside men to do what they do best, and that's run the football. Back to you, Ken. Thanks, Gavin. Well, no one who saw it will ever forget the try that Mal Meninga scored in that second test against Great Britain earlier this year. Ricky Stewart made the break, but Meninga finished it with the power of a juggernaut. Tonight, his kangaroo partners, Andrew Eddinghausen and Laurie Daly, will be lining up against Big Mal. Here's their game plan for marking Meninga. Well, he's pretty awesome, but I'll try to keep up with him and uh, get a few, few bites at the cherry, so hopefully knock him down after one or two attempts. Yeah, he's probably right, actually, because I'm pretty slow, so um, I'm going to have him work it out uh, contained, Andrew. Uh, he's playing very well this year. Well, just from watching and, and playing with him, um, you, you know, you, you see him uh, knocking over players all the time, and um, to actually, when you, when you think about you've you got to go in and tackle him, you, you're thinking, oh, geez, which way will I go? Will I go high or will I go low? But I, I think... The best thing to do is, is to just go in and, and hope for the best. Well, Laurie Daly seems to have a bit of a dilemma. What do you think down on the sidelines, uh, Bob Linder? Well, uh, Ken, you know, Mal Meninga's a very hard man to get around and attack. And uh, I heard a bit of press uh, during the week that E.T. was going to try and run around him. Well, if there's a man in uh, the New South Wales team that can do that, it's certainly E.T. He's very fast, but I know Mal slides in defence. And if he's going to cross Mal and get around him, E.T.'s got to cover a lot of ground. On the other hand, E.T. also said that he's going to hit Mal high in defence. Well, Mal's got one of the strongest palms in the game, and he's a very strong man, so I wish him luck there. It's going to be a lot harder than just you know, uh, what, he, what he expects, I think, Ken. OK, thanks, Bob. What do you think, uh, Peter Sterling, about Meninga's uh, role here? Well, I think the important thing in marking Mal Meninga is to get to him before he can get momentum up. So if you can arrange it, you want to be there before the ball arrives almost. And I suppose the fact that Eddinghausen and Daly have good speed will enable them to do that. Has he got a weakness, Meninga? Well, sometimes a stepper or a fast man can give him problems in defence. So it's not going to be all one-way traffic. He'll have his hands full in defence as well. In many media circles in Sydney, the Queensland pack has been written off, but Mal Meninga doesn't believe everything he sees and hears. That's typical Sydney. You know, that's the media hype they, they put and try and boost their guys up and uh, exactly opposite up here, I guess. You know, they're, they're really saying that our, our pack's a form pack and um, they're going to get and do the job. A few minutes away from kickoff, the first State of Origin match for 1991. Now, when that first State of Origin game was played here at Lang Park in July 1980, the Queensland team contained someone who was destined to become the player of the 80s, the man they call the King, Wally Lewis. Tonight he's back, and marking him is the current 5'8", Cliff, Cliff Lyons. Now, marking the King will be one of the tussles under the spotlight tonight, and when Lyons was asked if Lewis had any weaknesses, this is what he said. You don't play against him, you just you play against the team, like... Wally's a good player, he's a legend, he's been there, done that, and you just, you're there against the team, you're playing against 13 on 13, so you, you can't just worry about him. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to the, the confrontation with him, it's, uh, it's good to play against a guy that's really been in form, and that's what Cliff has been over the last uh, 12 months or so. I think it's going to make an absorbing battle, and I'm really looking forward to it. Well, Bob Lindner down the sidelines, that is going to be a very interesting tussle between those two 5'8s uh, of uh, very, very different ability. Uh, most definitely, Ken. They're both the playmakers of both teams. I think the biggest difference about them is that Wally Lewis actually takes full control of his team and he certainly lets his players know where, they, where he wants them to go. Whereas Cliffy, I mean, he's a magic player, but uh, sometimes, you know, the players around him aren't quite sure what Cliffy's going to call. But, uh, Never you mind, he'll have a few tricks up his sleeve tonight and uh, it'll be a great clash. Both of them are coming back from uh, knee injuries over the, a few months ago, so as far as fitness con is concerned, they'll be pretty much the same. I think it'll be a terrific tussle. Well, thanks, Bob. Uh, Peter, that ad-lib thing of uh, Cliff Lyons, I think now that he's played with this team so often, that may not be a problem anymore. Well, I think he's a much more mature player than we've seen him before in State of Origin fixtures. And the fact that he was a member of the Kangaroos team, a lot of these guys were involved in his play over there, I think... The combination that they've worked up will work in their favour tonight with Cliff Lyons. 
When Peter Sterling retired from representative football, the reins were handed over to a small man from Brisbane with a big heart and a bigger sidestep, Alan Langer. The kangaroo halfback position seemed to be his for a long time. But last year, his form stepped in another exciting player, Ricky Stewart, played in the Test Series against Great Britain. Tonight, they line up on opposing sides, and there's a lot at stake. Here's what they think of one another. He's, a, he's probably the key to the Queensland side. He's uh, got a very good kicking game. He's very smart with the ball. Um, he's a man that can turn a game, so uh, he's something the New South Wales have to watch. we just got to put a bit of pressure on his kicking game because we know he's got a great kicking game and uh, well, that's probably his main you know, thing. So that's one of the main things we've got to cut down on this week. There's nothing much between them, Peter. No, two very complete players, strike players, and the fact that they're going to handle the ball more than any other player apart from the dummy halves, it's going to be important which direction they're going to send that football. Anyone a better, bigger name player, better big game player? No, well, as Ricky Stewart said, Langer is, is he's going to be a key tonight. One thing that I would stress is their kicking game. Stewart has got a magnificent long kicking game. The contrast is Langer has a great short kicking game. Every player who has run onto Lang Park for the State of Origin game will tell you there's nothing quite like it anywhere else. New South Wales skipper Benny Elias describes the fierce parochialism of the Queensland crowd. It's intimidation. Benny thrives on it. Well, when there's 35,000 boisterous people out there, you've really got to, you know, blot it out as best you can and get out there and, and, and do your job. And it's just basically you've got to try and make the, the crowd work to your advantage. And a silent Lang Park, you know the Blues are going to go well. It's almost countdown time, just waiting for the Queensland and New South Wales teams to run out onto the ground and Andrew Slack just uh, looking at the way the New South Wales players saw this game and uh, one thing amused me, Andrew Eddinghausen and Laurie Daly coming up with a plan to handle Mel Meninga. There's a few come up with that plan in the past, haven't made it? Well, I think if, if Mel Meninga dominates, uh, it'll be good news for Queensland because it necessarily will mean that the pack has gone forward providing him with some ball. And there's the man in control for the first time after five test matches, two grand finals, Bill Harrigan arrived today. And a good referee in that he keeps the teams apart. We should see some fairly attacking play from both sides. He told me today at the airport he doesn't usually get nervous before a game. He said, when I woke up this morning, Alan, he said there was a little twitch in the tummy. Well, I reckon a bloke who's in the tactical response group wouldn't get nervous too easily. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The touch judges for this game, Peter Betros and Ross Pickard. I thought a very interesting comment made by Steve Jackson. Team looks as if they're coming on now. We'll come back to that. There's the referees. Bill Harrigan. Now comes Wally Lewis. Here comes the king. The new style jerseys this year with the white hoops. And all eyes on that man tonight. Steve Jackson in the starting team for the first time. Young Gary Larson from North Sydney. Playing in his State of Origin debut at Lock, taking the place of the best player in the Kangaroo Tour on Bobby Lindner. And here's Ben Elias in New South Wales. And Mick O'Connor, the highest scorer for New South Wales of both tries and points and goals in origin football since his debut in 85. Sirenan, Greg Alexander, team come out. There's the reserves, David Gillespie leading them out. And what a good-looking reserve bench it is as far as strength when they use the interchanges. Undoubtedly, they will for the first time in origin history. And Steve Roach, the man up front, the man who Wally Lewis says his clash with Martin Bella may well determine the outcome. The will of the wisp. Des Hasler. Wally Lewis has been under a lot of flack with his uh, fitness query and he's out to answer all questions tonight. I've only seen Lewis in this mood once before, Andrew. It was in 1987 before the crucial game in Sydney and, and that was the start of eight straight wins for Queensland and he's in that same mood tonight. A little pat there for Gary Larson just to try and settle him down. Well, Lewis, King, Emperor, if he pulls out a big one today, I reckon he'll be canonised. There'll be a number of people going to the Vatican.
Now for the last minute update on the sidelines, here's Sean Lawson and Gene Miles. Thanks, Alan. Do you know both teams look pretty well fired up tonight? Do you expect any fireworks? I'm pretty sure there will be. Um, you know, there's uh, 26 very determined faces out there, and, and this first 10 minutes won't be any place for the faint-hearted. Do you think Graham Lowe may have instructed his players to go in tight and hard? Oh, obviously, yeah. You know, I think the uh, the first 20 minutes is the key to the game here. I think Queensland Queensland must uh, weather the storm from New South Wales and then go on with it from there. Okay, here we go. Back to you, Alan. A kickoff about to be affected by Mel Meninga. Bill Harrigan hits the whistle and the first Winfield State of Origin underway. Ricky Stewart to return Meninga's favour. Hoff's first touch in for Belcher. There's no one at home. Stewart will be the chaser. This will be Khan to run it. Doesn't know too much about the kicking game, Willie Khan. He's put down by Daly and Roberts. Meninga to hit it up like a front rower. In goes Elias. Over the top, Wingaya. Jackson. Over the advantage line, eight short of the halfway. Jackson. Grabbed by Surinan. Now Walters. 10 metres inside New South Wales territory. Final tackle, Lang. Johns. Runs into Larson, and McLean may put him down 12 out from the line. Alexander to dummy half, over the lines. There's some thought that his knee was a little bit suspect. But he gets up and plays the ball quickly to Elias, and now Roach. He's at the 22. Sirenen. Good run from the big fellow. And a good hit from Jackson. Final tackle coming up, New South Wales. Not quite having it right. Stewart. This will bounce between both Hoff and Hancock. And Hancock will run it at Eddinghausen. Eddinghausen stood his ground, put him down. Meninga to Hoff. Eddinghausen again the tackler. Queensland inside their own quarter. Lions coming away with the ball. Heading off to the try line. Or Harrigan saying, no, you won't. I think Cliffy Lyons was the only one on the ground who thought he was going to score. Yes, in the first penalty of the match, and uh, again we said Harrigan will try and keep these teams apart. Noticed in that first set of tackles, and here we go with Lyons coming in to help Andrew Eddinghausen. What's that new rule? Straight from the IRB, uh, from the international meeting in France, not in play as of yet. So Queensland get outside their own 22. By about 12 metres. Martin Bella. Roach and Elias get hold of him. Roach a little over the top. No harm in the tackle. And Jackson had overrun Walters, so Walters had to take the tackle right on the halfway mark. Jackson to dummy half. McLean, he's lost it. Hit hard in the tackle. New South Wales can't hang on to it, but Queensland knocked it on first. New South Wales will have the feed. It's a fair stop sign in the shape of Mark Dyer. Stopped him in his tracks. Lines. Hoff has to hurry. Eddinghausen's first there. Can he wrong foot him? No, great work from Andrew Eddinghausen. Queensland five out from the line. Langer away to Larson. In goes Sirenen. The North Sydney lock goes to ground. Now G. Stewart the tackle. Bella to get over that advantage line. Stewart went low. Guy came in. Jackson back to Walters after the dummy. Stephen Walters stands his ground. Ball reefed out of his hands. Play on, says uh, Bill Harrigan. Aligns dummies to Daly. So New South Wales have the ball 12 metres inside Queensland Territory. Laurie Daly. Jackson went hard. Stopped his momentum. Lewis finished him off. 
Elias. Lewis has got him. And about three over the top and Bella Jackson McClung. Roberts. Now to Roach, changes direction. He got it back to Elias. Dyer one hands it to Johns. And his Broncos teammate, Mick Hancock, waits for him and puts him to ground. Eddinghausen. Stewart, and it's up high. Hoff's there. I don't know whether Hasler's on side. It didn't matter. But he took the ball well, Paul Hoff, and Laurie Daly met him at the same time. Lewis's first touch of the football at the 22. The crowd loved that. Jackson. Tackled by Hasler. Queensland only five metres outside their own 22. Larson. Hit hard by Roberts. The kicking game about to be tested by Queensland as it goes to Meninga. He gave uh, an ordinary pass to Hancock. He stayed in the field of play. Now the kicking game tested on the final tackle. Lang has just got it in. Play on. Lewis finding support. But ruling that the, the uh, New South Wales player didn't play at the football, so it was the final tackle and the handover. Walters not agreeing with it. Now lines inside to Daly. And he was just caught. Martin Bella was the front rower who came across in cover. Lines out the back to Daly. But the back line of New South Wales isn't there, so it goes to Roberts. Lewis stopped him. Finished off by Andrew G. Roach to hit it up hard and straight. The big block is almost out the quarter. Nil all the score. Lines. Short passing. Daly looking for Eddinghausen. Oh, here's trouble. O'Connor about six metres short of the try line. Hasler goes to dummy half. Now it's gone to Stewart. Is he looking for a cutout pass? Elias changes direction. They change it back to Sirenen. And Sirenen's a metre and a half away from the line on the final tackle. Elias, blindside with lines. The kick's in the end goal. And Queensland under pressure. Well, a slightly sloppy end to a wonderful passage of play from New South Wales and Gene Miles. They really look the, the 13 on the field for New South Wales that they've played with each other a lot before, as obviously they have on the Kangaroo Tour. Yeah, they sure do, mate. They've, uh, they're have they playing out their six tackles, which Queensland aren't doing, and uh, I think a little bit of the uh, early game nerves are playing a little bit of havoc with Queensland, so I think it's important that they play out their six. Martin Bella takes it forward five metres. as eight minutes gone and nil all the score. Mike McLean got it away to Larson. A little bit unconvincing. Now Walters. Over to Jackson. He's met at the advantage line by Roberts. That's the difference. New South Wales defence is meeting the Queensland attack. Queensland defence waiting for the New South Wales attack. Langer chips it straight to the hands of Ricky Stewart. And the two little fellows, well, they're not little fellows, but they're the two halfbacks. They confront each other just inside Queensland territory. His lines are game. Alexander into space, but no one's with him. Can he beat Hoff? No, he can't, and that's bad play for New South Wales. Alexander had them split. Where was Daly? Daly shaking his head downfield. Eddinghausen wasn't there, nor were the wingers, and that was a try bomb. I think Mick O'Connor might have slightly misread this as Lyons put Alexander beautifully through the gap. Now, Mick O'Connor at this stage is on the left flank. His options are either to get on the inside of Alexander. He decides to stay outside. Paul Hoff does a wonderful job in defence. Well, that was a let off for Queensland as Khan takes it 12 out from the line. Alexander's virtually first touch of the ball into space, running off lines. Queensland with Martin Bella. Good strong run over the top of Eddinghausen, fixed up by Roach. Now Jeter carted up. He's met by Stonewall defence. Queensland playing this game in their own territory. So far they're surviving. Jackson. Alexander. No room down the touch line. Driven back in the tackle. And I think we might have seen the key to the kicking game, uh, Andrew Slack there to Alexander. Kick on a very, very short side. Don't let him have the open spaces. Run him up the touch line. Certainly, but already the New South Wales kicking game does look stronger than, than Queensland's. But 
Queensland can hold New South Wales. They've had 10 minutes so far. If they can hold them without losing points, it could be a great morale booster for them. Roach. Now Elias to Gaia. He's got a pass back to Eddinghouse and Hoff will have to get him. The kick's ahead. The race is on and Hoff saves the day and stays in the field of play. By golly, he has been tested, Paul Hoff, here tonight. Khan, can he get out of his in goal? He's away. Can he link up with anybody? Great run from Willie Khan. He was tackled by Roberts. And now Lewis into Hasler. Jackson goes to dummy half. Jackson. Well, Paul Hoff came in for the uh, fullback and Gary Belcher, the test fullback, is in the grandstand and he has a worried look on his face, but Paul Hoff has done well here in the first 15 minutes. Langer down the centre of the ground to Alexander. Which option? He runs to O'Connor's wing. Can he take him with him? He does so. Can't wait for O'Connor and puts him down. And they're a bit slow getting back, New South Wales. Daly will have to run it on his own. Lewis slow to get to his feet and back play. Sirenen straight at Walters. He's underneath and puts him down. Now Stewart has Roach beside him. Gives it inside to Roberts. On the final tackle. Stewart's the first receiver. Queensland wingers do not drop back. They spin it with lines. Now he kicks behind Hancock for Johns. And the ball will go into touch, beating both of them. This telecast is proudly sponsored by Castlemaine Perkins, makers of 4X. So far, so far Queensland weathering the storm, Andrew. Yes, the defence has, has been good enough. And as I alluded to earlier, if they can just prevent New South Wales scoring, if New South Wales can get through in the next five minutes or so, it, it could just sap. Hancock, he's away! Tackle 10 short of the halfway. Lewis was in support. Lewis will serve Langer beside him. Jackson's outside him for the pass. Can they put Meninga into a hole? Jackson stays on his feet. Back to Langer. Stays on his feet. Back to Lewis. Well, McLean. All looking a bit flat in attack at this stage, the, the Queenslanders. Played at by Elias, and Queensland will come up with six to go. Right on the halfway mark, Queensland find it very hard to get to New South Wales territory, but Bella does now. Andrew G. Back to Stephen Walters. Harrigan trying to tell Eddinghausen he's creeping inside the five. Now to Langer and to Lewis. Meninga, can the big fellow put on the spurt to Hoff? Inside the 22. Now Khan to dummy half. Jackson's first receiver, Meninga's beside him. Inside to Meninga. And the Australian captain on the final tackles, 10 out from the line. This should be in the air. Jackson puts it up. Here's the tester, it's not a good one. In fact, it's almost gone backwards. And New South Wales will come up with possession. Well, Andrew Eddinghausen is best known for his attack, but gee, his defence has been wonderful tonight, Gene. Yeah, it sure has, mate. Uh, I think he's, uh, he's prevented a couple of uh, attacks from, from Queensland, but I think you'll notice in that uh, set of six, that was the first time Queensland has spent any time in New South Wales territory, and uh, if that bomb hadn't been a little bit better and uh, just kept them in the dead ball, I, th I think that would have been the better move. Do you think they're looking a bit at sixes and sevens in attack? Yeah, well, I think the game's been played at one hell of a pace, and uh, I think both sides are feeling the pinch at the moment. Hasler, centre field, 10 metres inside New South Wales territory. Elias. It's been touched. And this will give Hancock a bit of room. Now, he should be able to beat Elias. He did. But then, that was as far as he got, because Daly was there. Hoff from dummy half, wrong foot. Well, almost wrong foot of Ben Elias, but he's a master in the dummy half position. Is the Belmain captain. Lewis trying to find ground. I reckon that's all right. The bounce has gone the right way. That's where the mound on the ground is, and Lewis knew it. And Queensland are just starting to stem the tide. 
Graham Lowe obviously pleased with that effort and I'm a bit surprised that I, I guess Queensland have had four or five kicks at this stage. That was the first of Wally Lewis and it proved who was the best kicker in the Queensland team and he's the man who should be doing most of it. New South Wales backs up relatively flat. Lines, what's he do? Oh, there's gaps out wide and away goes Eddinghausen. What can he do? Hancock's got him and so is Larson. Classic cover defending tackle from the lock, Gary Larson. Now John's a dummy half. Dyer oh. hits solidly in the tackle. Coming around from Larson and also McLean. Who's the next big forward to hit it up? It's a little lock and Desi Hasler. Queensland will have to go up. Alexander's made a meal of it. He's going to kick it into touch. That's good pressure from the Queensland defence. New South Wales obviously out there with the intention of throwing the ball around. If Queensland can maintain that straight line and put a bit of pressure on, that's the sort of things that will happen. Ball will go to ground. Queensland will retrieve the ball. Lewis was looking for Jackson, but Jackson was too far behind him. Now Hoff's come into the back line as he receives the ball. Inside New South Wales territory. So for about the last eight to ten minutes, Queensland have been inside New South Wales territory. New South Wales had ample opportunity in the first ten minutes to put two tries on the board. Walters just outside the 22. Queensland in possession. Langer. G. Maninga. Back to G. Khan has to come in field and take the tackle. This is the final one. Langer calls for it. It's for the in goal. Alexander takes it and starts to motor. Oh, great tackle. Great tackle, Peter Jackson. Better let him go. He didn't and undid all the good work. No good the crowd booing. It affected the tackle and refused to let go of his legs. It was a great opportunity for Queensland. There's the, there's the call from Harrigan now to let him go and play the ball. Peter Jackson didn't hear it or ignored it. Penalty to New South Wales. 17 minutes gone. In the first half, nil all the score. New South Wales prepared to throw the ball more over the park than Queensland. Roberts met by Jackson and G over the top. Now Elias to Stewart. Doesn't want Siren. Gives it to Geyer. Larson's got him. Alan Langer tries to hang on to him. Martin Bella tries to come over the top. They eventually put the Penrith boy to ground. Lines. That's down Hoff's throat. Now there's only three there. Can he skirt lines? No, good work, Cliffy Lines. Lang at a dummy half will have to give it to Khan. He runs at Roberts. Over the top was Daly. He's eight short of the halfway. McLean. Busting run from the Newcastle second rower. And now we'll play it through Langer. Lewis. Cut out pass for Maninga. Any dummies. Here's Daly. Pass has gone to Lewis. Lewis has crunched. Haslow got top one for his own measure by his own man and Alexander. Lewis plays it. It's gone to Langer. What's on here? Jackson changes the point of direction. Stands back to Khan. And Willie Khan's 12 out from the line on the final tackle. Into the end goal. And New South Wales cover too good with Roberts. In the kicking game again, not taking full advantage of getting in that position of the New South Wales quarter. There's been three or four kicks now, and not really any of them have put immense pressure on the New South Wales defence. Well, New South Wales have come out, they've thrown everything at Queensland. Queensland have held their own, and they've just started to wouldn't say turn the tie but they're certainly starting to play with a lot more confidence maybe Gene Miles Queensland believe that New South Wales might have thrown their best shot of the dice well mate I think that they've lasted now 18 minutes and uh, you know it's, it's all been toe to toe stuff so I think now the uh, the opportunities will come out wide which Queensland just proved oh Stewart's made a meal of it and this is the chance Queensland wanted changeover on the final tackle Lewis Long pass to Meninga. Pushes off lines and takes the tackle. 
Lewis the dummy half. Larson looks to hit it up. Over the advantage line he goes. And inside the 22. Now for Walters. Bella. 14 out from the line. Now it goes to Langer. He dummies. And he's 10 out. To G now. And to Lewis. Running across and giving it to Meninga at the change of direction. Someone will have to tidy up. Steve Walters will. Gets away from one. Stays inside the 22. And they're on the final tackle. Langer's looking the blind side. Over the top it goes. Eddinghausen has to hurry with Hasler and Alexander. And eventually it's Hasler who saves the day. Impressive performance so far from Steve Walters. He's gaining some nice ground around dummy half. We look at the perhaps the first use of the interchange bench. What's happening down there, Sean? Uh, actually, New South Wales guys are warming up as well. Gillespie and Lazarus. So it looks like we're going to have some changes pretty soon. New South Wales now with a line, goal line dropout. There's 20 minutes gone in the first half. Nil all the score. Stewart to try and drop this to the halfway mark. The Hoff just waits over that mark and takes it now. And he runs it back to the 22. That was pretty poor chasing from New South Wales. No one got down there in a hurry. G coughs it up. Sirenen. New South Wales had possession, but the kick and chase, the, well, the kick was there, but the chase wasn't. Yeah, plenty of vim and vigour early on from New South Wales, but it has subsided lately, and uh, something Queensland would like to take advantage of. Unfortunately for them, that drop ball from G, perhaps the pressure relented somewhat. Eight metres outside their own 22. Elias to distribute. It's gone loose. Picked up by Queensland. Gone back, and that'll be McLean's ball. Caused by Wally Lewis putting pressure on, coming to meet the attack, which Queensland weren't doing early. They're doing it now. Langer goes to the short side. He was looking for Mickey Hancock, but Hancock had come in to take the ball up as a forward to relieve a bit of pressure. Bella. Guy slings him to the ground. He's lost the football. New South Wales will come up with it. Hasler, it's tackled by Jackson. New South Wales on their own, 22. Stewart, it's a long pass to Lyons. Can he beat Lewis? He'll turn it to Daly. Larson waits for him. Larson's got him. Good lock forward stuff from Gary Larson. Gillespie coming on for New South Wales. In the meantime, Stewart's found a half hole. Guy is out wide. Not the fastest man on the park. And now Elias has popped it up. Queensland come up with the ball. Just when New South Wales had created a gap, here's Larson over the halfway mark. Just yep. when they created a gap, they lost it. Yes, the pass from Ricky Stewart far too hard to Elias. Now Langer. McLean. Tackled by Roberts. This game starting to slow just a fraction now. Lewis to Meninga. Back to Lewis and Hoff to run it straight. That's all he knows. Almost got through the tackle. And over the top came Roach. With him was Hasler doing a power of tackling Des Hasler. Now Langer. Alexander. Dummies missed by McLean into space. Missed by Bella. Now it goes to Eddinghausen. Hoff will have to get him. Slows him down and gets him. Hancock was there to cover. Who wants it? Oh, the runners got in each other's road. They lost their momentum, New South Wales, although they still have numbers. Inside to Daly. Hasler's on his shoulder. He's gone without it. Elias will pick it up. And he's ruled and deemed that a knock on. And Elias is questioning it. Gee whiz, the Lions and Daly switch routine is, is cutting holes through the Queensland defence. They're reading each other's play very well. Gene, I'm very surprised that Wally Lewis has done no more than the one kick. It was a beauty, but down in the 22, it's been healthy, and they haven't been great kicks, have they? No, they certainly haven't. Mate. They haven't uh, maintained the pressure in, in this 50-metre zone. Um, you know, they've let uh, New South Wales off the hook on another number of occasions. And, uh, you know, it's a very dangerous period now for, for Queensland. They've weathered the storm, and, uh, you know, New South Wales are playing Tim Sheen's brand of football now and starting to throw it around. Mate, could you understand why Wally isn't doing more kicking? 
No, I really can't understand that. Unless he's uh, he's just not in the position to kick there. Um. He is now. Goes to O'Connor. Tries to run around Langer, and he won't do it. Alexander goes to dummy half, and Johns will have to hit it up. McLean went high. Gillespie on for Surinan. Oh, this is sloppy play from New South Wales. I'm just wondering, Gene Miles, if Queensland go to the break at nil all, they must come out with a psychological advantage second half. I'm sure Graham Lowe would be extremely happy if they could go to the break at nil all, but as I said before, this is a very important 15 minutes for Queensland. Now Stewart, giving Hoff plenty of work. That's a long kick. He's got a great kicking game as Ricky Stewart, and Hoff picks it up and runs it at Daly. And Daly put him down. Khan will have to go to dummy half and try and ruck something out of here about five metres. He'll do better than that. Willie Khan will do better than that. Now Meninga, and out wide it goes to Hancock. Stewart's got him covered, missed him. Hasler came and missed him. Stewart finished him off. Great run from Willie Khan. Now to Walters, to G, and now Lewis. He dummies. 10 metres over the halfway mark. And there's 14 minutes to half time, nil all the score. Walters. Eight short of the 22. Now Langer. He's got Larson inside him. Went back to G. And waiting for him was Guy, and that was the end of that. Jackson. Dummies. Dummies, Jackson. The runners are G. That could have been touched. No, it's play on. Jackson goes through, tackled it out the ball, and that'll be a penalty Queensland. This is the first time we've seen a penalty in the kicking area. In fact, we haven't seen many penalties at all. No, it's great, isn't it, not to notice the referee, but that was certainly a fair penalty to Queensland. It's developing as one of those games where you'll take the two points when you can. It could become very crucial. And here's the reason for the penalty. The kick has come through. We've just missed that, and there's the late tackle on the kicker. And also, Greg Alexander made a bit of a mess of it as well. So I, I just think the Blues' confidence may be... Well, it's not shot, but it's... Uh, I think it's got a little bit of a scare of the last 15 minutes because after that initial on, onslaught from them, I would suggest that Queensland have dominated the last half hour. All right, we'll take a break. Be back in a moment. Mel Meninga. 11 metres out. Hits it. It's over. Queensland hit the front 12 minutes to half time. They lead by two points to nil. Mel Meninga has had a lot of work and attack in this last 15 minutes. He's worked well with Wally Lewis, the old combination, and Peter Jackson, that very experienced midfield. Meninga, Jackson, and Lewis really cutting the work out for the New South Wales three quarters. But by the same token, Daly and Eddinghausen doing their fair share of defence. Alexander to restart. Man Anna Meninga. Guy waits for him. Changes direction. Ran into Roberts. 6 1 half does the other. Jackson. Good run from the prop. Walters. Out to G. He runs at Hasler. By golly, he gets through some work, Desi Hasler. There's a better 80 minute player in the game. I'll, I'll walk to Burke. Larson. Lewis. Now, O'Connor or Alexander. O'Connor will take it, and there's a, about eight maroon jer jerseys waiting for him. Only needed one with Larson. And so far tonight, uh, Andrew, the debutantes have held their own. Well, Gary Larson really has been outstanding. Whoops, he's trouble. Chris Johns, Hancock's after him. Now the pass to Eddinghausen, he's dropped it. And Hoff's come up with it. And the big fellow's away. And now he's lost it. And it's an open ball game. There's gaps all over the park. Gillespie, first touch of the football. Here's Roach. G went high. 
float him down. Langer with the help put him down. There's 10 minutes to the break. O'Connor from dummy half. 35 out from the Queensland line. Gillespie to hit it up. And unloads to Stewart. He's dropped it. And New South Wales have got a touch of the drops. He's in this first half. Yes, well, they're not throwing the sympathetic passes. Again, that was the case of just tossing it too hard right at Stewart's chest at a million miles an hour. Stewart was guilty of the same misdemeanour some time ago. Now he knows how it feels. Queensland back with an opportunity to run the ball. Well, Lang has picked up the ball. The New South Wales players, very lucky not to be pinged. Alexander looked a mile offside. Now with Larson. Good tackle underneath from Geyer. He's cut him down like a machete. McLean stands his ground. Gets to the halfway before he's put down. Now Bella through Elias almost. Elias wrapped him up. Dalian Stewart back a shallow five. Now to Lewis. Meninga. It's touched by New South Wales and will go into touch. That came off a New South Wales player for mine. Gary Belcher, no doubt, bitterly disappointed he's not out there, but by golly, he'd be proud the way that Paul Hoff substituting for him. Langer feeds. Eight and a half minutes to half time. Queensland lead 2 0. In it goes. Hello, what's happened here? Langer's knocked it on. He's got the penalty. Well, that's not highly intelligent play from Mark. Guy Mark was the Lyle. offender. There's no way the referee couldn't have seen it. He's your side. He kicked the ball back into the scrum and just gives Mel Meninga another opportunity, although Lewis has opted to take... Has he opted to take the two? He's got a decision on his hands. So, no. Lewis to kick for touch. Walters taking a bit of time to set himself. Whoops. Langer hangs on to it. Now back to Larson. Larson's tackled by his opposite number and Desi Hasler. Walters is a... No, they've lost it. New South Wales too quick on the strike and the play the ball. Daly down injured. Elias will play it. O'Connor. Daly slowly to his feet. Or to his haunches anyway. Roberts. Queensland tackling like demons. Seven minutes to the break. New South Wales have created ample opportunities to score. They haven't finished it off. Guy on Langer. Bit of an uneven contest. So Wally Lewis came in to even it up. They still couldn't put the big bloke down. Stewart. Tackled by his opposite number. And now the final tackle. Khan drops back. Alexander the kicker. Down to Hoff and Hancock. How's the bounce? It'll sit up for Mick Hancock. Hasler's the chaser. Stepped inside Hasler. And who was there to put him down but Andrew Eddinghausen. Well, Khan did well to pick that up. I'm just wondering whether that ball's a bit slippery. That looked like it slipped out of Hoff's hands on that pass. Well, this will help Queensland. Help relieve a bit of pressure, get the ball out of their own territory. He's been doing it all night. Jackson to kick for touch. Finds it. This telecast is proudly sponsored by the bank that keeps banking your way, Metway Bank. Now for Jackson. Runs at the 22-metre line. Five and a half minutes to half time. Queensland lead two points to nil. It's now with Langer. Long pass to Lewis, to Meninga. Who wants it? Inside is Jackson. Back to Lewis, to Larson. He'll run it straight. New South Wales cover defence to the four. This is a one tight game of rugby league. Langer. Still trying to get away from Alexander and Stewart. 
Walters can't wrong foot Elias on the final tackle. Lewis calls for it. Over the top it goes. And it'll be... Ooh! Be forced over the dead ball line, but very shakily. Chris John scooting back. This will be a goal line dropout, so Queensland with a chance to keep the pressure up. And really the first time that there's been any great pressure on a kick in the 22. New South Wales lucky to get out of it, but the pressure will soon be back on them, although Stewart does give these dropouts a thump. We'll get it up to at least the halfway pass form as any indication. Stewart and Langer really having a good one-on-one -on -one tonight. Shallow one. So Hoff gives it to Larson. Gary Larson, 10 out from the 22. Bellas lost it. Will Harrigan ruling the ball, propelled in a forward motion. Well, he had to, I guess he was going forward. He's worked hard, Bella, but that's twice in about that area he has coughed up position. Does play in contact lenses, Martin Bella. And Queensland had plenty of possession lately, dominating both scrums and penalties. 5-2, the scrums 4-1 the penalties, so they can have no complaints from that side of things. Bill Harrigan having a yarn to Martin Bella at this stage. What do you think that'll be about, Gino? Sorry, mate. Bill Harrigan, Martin Bella having a tater take. What might that be about? Mate, um, Martin lost one of his uh, contact lenses, and uh, he's uh, indicated to the trainer that uh, he wants it to hang on to it until half time. New South Wales get a penalty. Might have been a bit of chat in there. Only three and a quarter minutes to half time. Queensland lead two points to Lil. As Stewart finds touch. Three metres inside Queensland territory. Can Queensland hold on for three minutes to half time? New South Wales lined out. Eddinghouse and Dale lined. Gillespie had overrun it. I don't know whether Gillespie thought he was a decoy, but Gillespie had overrun lines virtually before he had the ball. Elias turning it up the middle for Roberts. Now back it goes to Gillespie and Stewart. Geyer, can he create havoc out wide? Very hard man to put down, but Jackson slung him to the ground. Lost five metres, New South Wales, on that plate. Chris Johns runs into Jackson. Two and a half minutes to half time. Elias down the blind side. Chip over the top. Langer covers. And Elias tries to drag him into touch. And he's hurt himself, Elias. Now Hoff trying to run to the open spaces. Two points to nil in a very, 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 very dour game. McLean, he's lost it. New South Wales come up with it. Two minutes to the break. Can New South Wales score with 120 seconds on the clock? Daly, Langer's coming in cover. Wrong foots him. Lewis wraps him up with Larson. Gillespie to take the settler. Stewart calling for Roach to take it up and said, here, blocker, it's yours. And the big fellow gets the pass away. Gillespie will hang on to it. Langer tries to get him by the jersey, and they've lost it. Bit of panic stuff from New South Wales. Now McLean. Over the halfway mark, he's effective when he hangs on to the ball, Michael McLean, but he's had a couple of... Go to ground. Here's Bella. Gary Coyne coming on for McLean. Now Larson. In the final 60 seconds to the break, to Langer. Over the top for Khan. The race is on. Khan's coming quickly. O'Connor always going to beat him to the ball. And it goes in touch and goal. So there'll be a time for probably one tackle. The Queensland aren't in a hurry to give Elias the football. Elias has had a look at the clock. And I wouldn't be surprised there'd be a tap and kick and chase on here. 
16 seconds remaining. Roach takes the first one. Back to Elias. Oh, New South Wales really not sure what they're doing here. Eddinghausen goes to ground. There's a fight on. Andrew G and Steve Roach. That's half time. Bella pushes Blocker away. Touch judges come in. That's the end of the first half. Bill Harrigan having a talk to both touch judges, Peter Betros and Ross Pickard. Of course, this could be crucial if a penalty comes out of it to Queensland. Could take them that four-point break at half time. Obviously, New South Wales could do very little if it went their way. Might be just a caution to Andrew G and Steve Roach. Elias is there with Roach. From Harrigan's point of view, a handy time for that to happen. It'll be diffused by the break and they'll come out with other things on their mind for the second half. Warning, settle it down. That's half time. And at the break, Queensland lead New South Wales by two points to nil. Well, Andrew Slack. At half time here at Lang Park, Queensland lead by two points to nil. New South Wales came out looking like world beaters the first 10 minutes. They found gaps in the Queensland offence. They bombed, in my opinion, two tries. And at the break, Queensland have kicked a penalty goal through Mel Meninga. They lead by two points to nil. Now the penalties favoured Queensland in the first half, 4-2. The scrums went Queensland's way, 5-2. And Mel Meninga kicked that, uh, that penalty goal for Queensland to score. Uh, two points in that first 40 minutes. And New South Wales, believe it or not, for three to one on favourites, haven't come up with a point as we have a look at the highlights of the first 40 minutes. Lines. Short passing. Daly looking for Eddinghausen. Oh, here's trouble. O'Connor about six metres short of the try line. His lines again. Alexander into space, but no one's with him. Can he beat Hoff? No, he can't, and that's bad play for New South Wales. Stays inside the 22, and they're on the final tackle. Langer's looking the blind side. Over the top it goes. Eddinghausen has to hurry with Hasler. He'll do better than that. Willie Kahn will do better than that. Now Meninga, and out wide it goes to Hancock. Stewart's got him covered, missed him. Hasler came and missed him. Dummies. Dummies, Jackson. The runner's a G. That could have been touched. No, it's play on. Jackson goes through. Tackle without the ball. And that'll be a penalty Queensland. Hits it. It's over. Queensland hit the front 12 minutes to half time. They lead by two points to nil. And there was no further score in the first half. Queensland did lead two points to nil. That's the half time score. We'll take a break and then be back here at Lang Park. Welcome back live to Lang Park. G Miles, how did you see the first half? Well, mate, I think that New South Wales made more clean breaks than Queensland, but fortunately for Queensland, we had someone uh, in the cover defence role. So, you know, I was just a little bit worried about the first 40 minutes, but now that Queensland have got over that, they're in front, I think they're a big chance to go on with it now. It's very important this next 10 minutes that they, uh, they come out here with the intensity and the concentration to, uh, to play out the six tackles and to have a, have a really good kicking game. New South Wales seem to take the wrong options. Yeah, they did on, on several occasions, you know, uh, the, the clean breaks they did make, they, uh, they had uh, some, some situations three on two or two on one, and uh, fortunately for us, they, they did take the wrong uh, options. The expected dominance by the New South Wales forward pack just hasn't occurred, has it? Well, I think it's a, it's a pretty even battle up there at the moment. You know, Queensland have probably been their own worst enemies, uh, coughing the ball up on, uh, on early tackle counts, which, uh, which has put them under a fair bit of pressure. But, uh, you know, as I said, I think it's pretty even in the forwards, and, uh, you know, the next ten minutes is going to be very important. If you were Graham Lowe on side, what would you be saying to the side? Well, I'd be extremely happy, and uh, you know he'd be getting that point across that uh, they've shown it the best they have it at them, and uh, the next half's out there to take, and uh, you know if we're good enough, we can take it. The new boys going extremely well, McLean, Larson, and Co. Yeah, well, I think they've they've held their heads up very high, and uh, extre you know especially Paul Hoff, I think back there they they probably uh, singled Paul out for a bit of uh, bit of pressure. And uh, they've, they've kicked to him. They've done everything to him. They've had two on one situations, and he's, and he's done the uh, he's done the job for Queensland. And uh, you know, I, th I think he's, uh, he's he's done a very special job there for Queensland, as has Larson in cover defence. What about the fitness of the Queenslanders? A few of them seem to be dragging along behind there. You know, 
from both sides, the players that haven't had a great deal of football. I noticed Clippy Lyons is also uh, doing a fair bit of walking, and you know he had a late start to the season. And also Laurie Daly, um, you know he's been out uh, for the last four or five weeks with a cheekbone injury. And you know on the Queensland side, well, uh, you know they've they played very well for the 40 minutes, and they're entitled to have a, a little bit of a rest. And, and that's why Graham Lowe used the interchange rule there on uh, Mike McLean, just to give him that little bit of extra time over the uh, half time period. New South Wales seem to have a little bit of a better kicking game at the moment, though. Yes, but I noticed late in the uh, second half, uh, in the first half, there that Wally did come in, into his own there, and uh, you know, I think he, he'll play a very big part in, in the second half here in keeping New South Wales in their own territory and maintaining a lot of pressure. I notice there's also a bit of breeze up at the moment, favouring the Queensland side in the second half. Back to you, Alan. Andrew Slack, when you've played in teams or played against teams who come out at 100 mile an hour, throw everything at you and can't score, what, I mean, if you're the opposition like Queensland are here, automatically do you think well hang on i'm in with a chance here yes well as the team has been doing the defending and the underdog in this case queensland who you're referring to you're dead set right I, when it looked as if new south wales would break through at any minute early i'm sure queensland supporters had hearts and mouths but the fact that they have got through that period that very tough period would just show to the steve jacksons the gary larsons the mike mcclain's that they're up to this standard of play and haven't they turned it around in the last half hour on the other hand you've got new south wales who probably players say we don't take our favourite favouritism seriously. Really, in a situation where you're three to one on, you often think, you often think that uh, you've got a shoe in as much as you like to deny it. And when you don't get through in that first 10 or 15 minutes, you start to look at each other, and you could see the separation in the style of play between that first 15 minutes, the last 25. Bill Harrigan coming back onto the field, shortly followed by the players, and of course. Uh, Tim Sheens and Graham Lowe have got to work out where they use their uh, their interchange. Now, Sheens has got Brad Fittler sitting there. He's a match winner. And Gavin Allen, I know, would be just chomping at the bit to get out there uh, for Queensland. So the interchange rule in the second half and how the coaches use them could be a very, very vital cog in this wheel before the next 40 minutes is over. Well, it's just another thing that coaches have to worry about. We were talking before the game about as if there's not enough that uh, play, uh, coaches have to think about. Now, with this, there's a whole new dimension. Sometimes I wonder if you're just better off letting your instincts take over rather than plan too much around the interchange. Wally Lewis's performance. Great. A bit underplayed, I feel. That might not necessarily be a bad thing come the second half. All right. Queensland come back on the field couple of changes in the Queensland side. Gavin Allen's on, and Coyne is still on. Gavin Allen, he's a, a no-nonsense type prop forward who will run hard and run straight. This is one of the things that impressed me as we look at Laurie Daly coming out with David Gillespie and that Desi Hasler. What a play this fellow is. I just keep marvelling at his effort. He tackles him up the middle, then someone makes a break. He's there in cover. He's yeah. a genius. Yeah. Well, he's got a nice shiner, and he's trying to see. There's f one, two. <laughs> Come on, Wald, you can do it. One, one, to get the eyes focused. <laughs> well, he had a look at the five fingers, and he put up one. <laughs> well, with Martin Bell losing a contact lens, and Wally going to have that eye closed, it'll be a one-eyed Queensland team, but I don't think that will matter, because the fact that they've gone through that first half, have a 2-0 lead, that will lift them, and I'm sure that Graham Lowe will have addressed it at the address the problems at the halftime if he'd seen any. I think the great problems came early. They overcame them later. Looking forward to this second half. Alexander starts the second half. Alan Langer over to Maninga. Well, he gave Elias a bit of a shove, but to his credit, Ben Elias stood his ground. Here's Alan. This is what you'll see from most of him in the second half. He just runs harder, runs straight. That's one of the uh, impressive parts of his game like Gary Larson has tonight as Coyne is tackled 15 short of the halfway second interchange for New South Wales Guy is on for Surinan all right Surinan's on for Mark Guy Alexander now Connor runs into Allen and Andrew G Hasler will go to dummy half and the same two men put him down on tackle too Gillespie. Queensland lead 2 to nil. Here's Roberts into Bella. And the club mates clash. So Stewart to test Hoff. 
and Kahn. So it's Willie Kahn to Hoff, who tries to get around Hasler. No hope. <laughs> no hope. <laughs> Great stuff there, Hasler. Here's Kahn. Big, strong fellow. He'd really look for work today, Willie Kahn. Larson into Sirinan. All of a sudden, one has the impression, Andrew Slack, that uh, the tactics have changed somewhat. That the game, even at this early stage, looks a lot more compact than it was in the first 40 minutes. That's a better kick from Lewis. That'll give Alexander something to start along with. And now he'll try and run around Meninga. Oh, he tried. Connor tries to sneak up the blind side, makes it to the 22. So Daly, just outside the 22, New South Wales rucking it up. Surinan's the wide runner. And Surinan goes to ground, we'll go to the sideline and find out what went on in the Queensland dressing room at the break. I, mean, I just had a quick chat with Kevy Wallers and uh, Graham Lowe was uh, reasonably happy. He was, wasn't happy in one aspect of the game, is, is around the market play. They, they've got to work a lot harder and chase out there a lot harder. And also the return of kick plays, which we're about to see now, he wants them to bring them back with a lot more purpose. Well, Hoff will run it back with a bit of purpose to the halfway, and Hasler and Daly are the tacklers. Langer from dummy half. Now Hancock. Can he run straight and hard? He's tackled right on the halfway mark. Lewis calling for it. But it goes to Langer. Meninga. Can't break tackles. Surinam's got hold of him. So is Daly. And this is a very, very tight Winfield State of Origin match from Lang Park. Roberts into Andrew G. Larson. He's held up. Ten metres inside New South Wales Territory on the final tackle. Who's the kicker? And we're supposed to go to Lewis. Now where will this bounce? Well, it stayed in the field of play. Khan did the chasing. And he got Nick O'Connor. Alexander will try and scoot. G's got hold of him and puts him down. O'Connor will have to take the tackle again because there's no one back there. Langer puts him down on tackle three. Now Elias to distribute for Gillespie, runs into Langer. That's tackle four. New South Wales still on their 10 metre line. Johns to take it up like a front row on tackle five. Where are the forwards? Someone has to do some work. They kick on the final tackle. Hoff runs at lines. Almost got through, Ricky Stewart finished him off. As we go back to the boys on the sideline, what happened in the New South Wales dressing room with Tim Sheens? Tim Sheens is very unhappy the way his side is going. He knows he's got the team to win, but they're just not putting it together. He wants more teamwork and more guts. He would be disappointed. They never got a point in the first half. Jackson back to Lewis. Bellator run it up straight. Martin Bellator takes on two. Queensland lead two to nil. Now it's with Coyne. Roberts went the shoulder charge. Surinan affected the tackle. Langer. Dummies to Gavin Allen. Kicks ahead. Hasler. The man of the moment on the spot took it brilliantly and didn't knock it on. Here's Lyons to Eddinghausen. And he's tackled by Peter Jackson. Peter John's a dummy half looking for a runner. Can't find one. There's not a runner in the New South Wales pack. The hooker has to take it up. Elias will be screaming in a moment. New South Wales forwards with their hands on their hips. So the backs are doing all the work. They're in a huddle. No wonder Tim Cheens was dirty at half time. If he's dirty at half time, he'll be dirty now. The backs are doing the work. Sirenen. On to Larson. Back to Johns. Couldn't get the pass to Hazard. Hancock will have to move. Now, will he run around Hasler? He's going to give it a go. Gave him the darn argue, but Hasler again was too good. Langer goes to dummy half to Hoff. 
this game played at a cracking pace in the first 40 minutes Gavin Allen into Roach Roberts helps to put him down Lewis how's the bounce don't need me to say anything just listen you know, This telecast is proudly sponsored by the bank that keeps banking your way, Metway Bank. The crowd chanting for Lewis. Queensland only protecting a two-point lead, but Lewis already trying to control the game as Daly tries to beat Jackson and Meninga, and he can't. But he's got the pass back to Eddinghausen. Wrong footing a couple. Runs a ten short of the halfway. Jackson was the tackler. Johns. Over to O'Connor, tries to step through Larson and Coyne and throws him a pass back to Hasler. New South Wales all in a... There's no back line inside of New South Wales. They're all in the huddle with hands on their hips. The back line's too tired from doing the forwards work of late. They're entitled not to be there. Someone's got to take it up the middle. Now Elias. What can he orchestrate to lines? He's dropped it. Has had a very ordinary game. Cliff Lyons missed a couple of vital tackles. His opposite number, Wally Lewis, as I said earlier, underplaying his role but still doing the right things at the right time. New South Wales at the moment are looking an untidy outfit. Only down two points to nil as Meninga takes it over the halfway mark. A few of those forwards are not doing their job. Larson. Fit young athlete, Gary Larson. Locker rates the tackler. Now Walters from dummy half. He has made metres every time he's gone from dummy half today, Steve Walters. On the final tackle, Langer. Up it goes. <laughs> Alexander takes it well. Willie Kahn and Lewis with the chases. Now can O'Connor step Kahn? He ran it to Andrew G. The New South Wales, 10 out from their own line. Daly. Where are the New South Wales forwards, Andrew Slack? Well, I think Ben Elias, I don't know about his body, but his mouth will be tired at the end of this. He's surely screaming at them to get some work. And there, once more, Chris it's, John. A, it's a winger doing the work. Chris Johns, he's taken it up about four times in the nine minutes of the second half. So Stewart, dummies, smothered. Now on the final tackle. Hancock and Khan drop back as the goes to Elias. That'll go to Khan's win. And Khan's five metres inside New South Wales territory. Lewis over to Hoff. Tackled by Siren. Bella. Martin Bella. Big strong run from the big prop. 10 out from the 22. Queensland on a roll to Langer. Can't step inside. Back to Walters. Larson. And Gavin Allen on the 22 metre line takes the tackle. The Queensland backs line out. It goes to Langer. The long pass to Lewis. And he's got Meninga 15 metres away. And here's Jackson. Back to Meninga. To Willie Khan. Back to Lewis. Back to Meninga. Meninga's going to take the tackle, 10 out from the try line, and this is number six. Langer's in position to put it up. Will it be in the air or into the end goal? It's along the ground. Has it been tackled without the ball? New South Wales force it over the try line. Great chase from Larson. Once again, the old firm working well there. Lewis, Meninga and Jackson over the Frank Burke stand side. The move made. Much easier by another missed tackle by Cliff Lyons. Could have easily been a muck up there. And Greg Alexander, I don't think, would have appreciated uh, Andrew Eddinghausen, but it was danger time. The chant goes up for Queensland. New South Wales only trailing by two points, but the long odds on yeah. favourites are not looking the goods. Doesn't show much emotion, Graham Lowe, but I think at two points to nil lead, he'd be pretty happy. It's 12 minutes gone in the second half. Allen, over the 22. 
coin calls for it and Walters goes on his own. He's 10 metres out from the line, throws it along the ground. Meninga will tidy up. Back to Jackson. Now to Meninga. Back to Coyne. Gary Coyne's inside the 10 metre mark. Lewis goes to dummy half. Now to Langer. Wrapped up on the final tackle. Lewis calls for it. This should be for behind Eddinghausen. Lewis kicks. Well taken by Johns. Hasn't let his team down tonight, Chris Johns. Dearly wants to play on a winning side. He's played three games for New South Wales for no wins. Now Elias never stops trying. Larson the tackler. Roberts into Gavin Allen. They drive the big fella back with Walters. A two-point lead mightn't see much. And now they're going to spin it on their own try line, New South Wales. That was almost forward to Hasler. Now they're on the final tackle. Stewart will have to hoof this as far as he can. The chase is on. And he left foots it. Great chase from Martin Bellingham. Hoff can't beat Daly and O'Connor. He's eight metres inside New South Wales territory. Khan will scoop from dummy half. Daly watches him. Gillespie misses him. Khan straightens up. Larson will hit it straight. And they're 10 out from the 22. Here goes Peter Jackson. Has to come in field. It does so. Stays in the field of play. Now it'll go to Langer. Does he want Wally? No. He's looking for someone now. Jackson. Back to Lewis. Lewis going for the try line. A metre out. They're on the final tackle. Can Hancock spin it? He's given it to Hasler in an offside position. Hasler's accepted the pass. And now they can kick for goal here if Lewis so desires. And why wouldn't you? Yes, he's going to kick for goal. We'll be back in a moment. Back live, and you haven't missed any of the action. Mel Meninga taking plenty of time over this penalty attempt. Territorially, it's been all Queensland in the second half, but they only lead by two points. Meninga, 23 metres out, about nine in from touch. He's kicked one from one. South Wales, I think, might appreciate a bit of breathing space here. Their forwards are not working. Intense concentration on the big man. It's coming back. It's coming back, but it's just wide. Now's a chance with Alexander into open space. He gets to the 22-metre line. Now O'Connor from dummy half. He's tackled by Khan and Walters. 16 minutes gone, Queensland lead two points to nil. Now through Stewart and to Gillespie. He's prepared to work a bit and run a bit. Wrapped up beautifully by Larson. Now to Stewart. Lines trying to put Daly into a hole. And he gives it to O'Connor. Now will Khan wait for him and put him down? Yes, he will with the help of Andrew G. Sloppy is the only way you could describe the New South Wales attack of late. They're mistiming their runs. They're under pressure, as you see there. Stewart gets away, but again, it's not the kick he was showing early on. It's because of that pressure put on by the Queensland defence, he can't put it on the spot he wants. Hoff tucks the ball under his wing. And he's 10 out from the 22. It's been a while since New South Wales has been down this end of the field. Finding it hard to get to his feet. Meninga will play the ball. And what's happened here? One of the New South Wales players going over. It's teammates. I just wonder there if Chris Johns collected uh, Paul Hoff at the head right before the, the two players hit the ground. Perhaps a, a slight dose of concussion. And although he is feeling the AC joint there on the right shoulder, so perhaps it was there that the players made contact. But I do feel that the, uh, the part that hurt was prior to hitting the deck. Yes, the shoulder doesn't look too hot. There's Hasler coming over.
This telecast is proudly sponsored by Castlemaine Perkins, makers of 4X. Paul Hoffman led away. Martin Bella will play the ball. So at the moment, Queensland without a fullback. He imagines Michael Hancock will get that role. Not something they choose to happen. Kevin Walters on the sideline with Steve ran off. Well, he, it could be anything. It's obviously the rider, whether it's arm, shoulder or wrist, but whatever it is, it's tender. So we're back in action, so Lewis decides to kick the ball immediately to Alexander. And the chasers are G. Larson, Jackson, Meninga and Khan. So who's it going to be? Whoops. Now O'Connor. Larson tackles him. He's played really well tonight, Larson. Five metres outside their own 22. Steve Runoff is on the field. He has gone to the wing. Khan has gone to fullback. Stuart dumbing the lines. Trying to pick up someone or other. Right over to Chrissy Lyon, Cliffy Lyons. And Lewis puts him down. He gets the pass away. Now they flick it back. And John starts a run. I don't know if that stuff's all fancy on your own 22 metre line, Andrew Slack. Well, it's all right if it's on your own 22 line, as long as you're doing it over the advantage line, which New South Wales are. Hasler. Just short of the halfway. Now they're on the final tackle. Stewart, will he kick? Khan and Renouf will have to hurry. Khan will pick it up. And he's tackled on the 22 metre line. Gene Miles, you ever played in a game where Willie Khan's been fullback? Yes, mate, he's done a good job for us. So in the, uh, the Lotto Challenge in the final, uh, Willie went to fullback. And uh, he's done a very good job. Allen. So Queensland a 10 out from their own quarter line. Larson. Now the kick should be on from Jackson. And that runs well. So Alexander, who's he pick out? Does he pick Langer? No, he tries to go Meninga. But Alexander runs into Langer eventually. So that was a good kick and chase. Siren takes it to the 22. Quick play, the ball is good to Elias. He's missed by Allen and Bella, and now Hasler. Just runs all night, Des Hasler. Just, Just as well he does, because he's had no one else running up in Benny Elias. There's a real reluctance to, to take it up. That's been going on most of the second half. Roberts puts down, uh, is put down by Larson. Two replacements coming off for New South Wales. Brad Fiddler and Lazarus is, will be going on. So he's Khan. Tries to run away from Hasler and Eddinghausen. They Bottle him up. Hancock. Ten metres outside his own 22. Two points to nil the score. We've got 20 minutes remaining. As Meninga goes down the short side, it's picked up by Daly. Khan will have to get him. He comes inside. Martin Bella holds on to him. Five out from the line. New South Wales storming home. Here's Elias. He's tackled by Lewis. Queensland defend their own try line. Two points to nil is the lead for New South, uh, for Queensland. Now it's with Stewart. Over to Gillespie. He's knocked back, and that'll be Queensland ball. That'll be shattering for New South Wales. The first on that, an attacking opportunity. Gavin Allen. Put that save try down to Willie Khan. Here's Coyne. Now Walters from Dummy over to G. Shoulder charge from Roberts. Langer over the top to try and split Alexander and Hancock. Alexander takes it and he has a bit of room. Langer got to him, put him down. O'Connor, well he didn't go to Dummy Half, Stewart did. 
Little whiz over the top from uh, Walters. Now lines, but he's got no one with him. He's on his own. He has to take the tackle. Lines trying to get the penalty. Harrigan will have nothing to do with it. Roberts has dropped it, and that's gone forward. And Elias is frustrated. He's got his hands on his head. He's screaming at his forwards to control the football as we see Glenn Lazarus and Brad Fittler come onto the field. Fittler, I feel, Andrew Slack, the danger man. Yes, undoubtedly, but I'm just wondering if there are communication problems down there for, for New South Wales. I don't know if Sean or, or Gene has picked anything up, but are they panicking? I don't know. But here's Khan in from fullback. Can't get around lines. And quickly over the top came Fittler. Gene Miles got a comment? Yes, mate. I just, I just hope that... Uh... Queensland haven't burned up all their all their petrol like um, you know we spend a lot of time in New South Wales half but we just can't seem to put the ball over the line and uh, you know that last ditch tackle by Willie down there there was a lot of tired boys to bring that ball out so let's just hope we can get the ball over the line in this series of six. Here's Lewis inside to Meninga they can't stop him from there he's got it down it's a try to Queensland Lewis and Meninga combining you can't stop the big locomotive that far short of the try line and Queensland Extended their lead to six points to nil. Lewis and Meninga, the two stalwarts combined. Well, the look of bewilderment on all the New South Wales players. They don't know what's happened. I'll tell you what's happened. The old firm in, New South, in Queensland side, Wally Lewis and Mel Meninga, have backed up the good work made by their forwards throughout this the last hour of this game. Capitalise, and there's the switch. And you don't stop Mel Meninga in that situation. Greg Alexander, no hope. Lewis absolutely elated. Nothing wrong with the knee or the arm there as he hurdles Mel Meninga. Lewis dummied. Gabe Eddinghouse on the short back and side. Roach was too slow in cover. And Meninga that close to the line. You just can't stop him. And Queensland lead by six points to nil with 16 minutes remaining. Well, they took your cue on that, uh, Gene Miles. They hadn't converted after all that pressure. They now have converted. What do they do? Well, I think uh, New South Wales soaked up all the pressure they could. They had to bust, and, uh, you know, it was just uh, numbers on numbers out there. And now it's time for Queensland just to consolidate, use Wally's kicking game, and don't give away any silly penalties in the New South Wales uh, half. Gee, it's been a good reward for Mel Meninga. He seems to have been taken the grafting role today. He's done the hard stuff all throughout the game. He knew it wouldn't be easy. It hasn't been. Uh, Mel, Mel involved himself right from the kickoff. No goal. Queensland leads 6 0. Back in a moment. First tackle from the kickoff is taken by Peter Jackson. Now, this is Walters. This is Kevin Walters who's come on the field and he'll play it to his brother Steve. Back to Kevin. Gives it to Runoff. He's tackled by Lazarus. So Queensland 10 short of the halfway. They lead by six points to nil. Langer. Back it goes to Walters. And like another forward, Stephen Walters breaks away. Now who can get with him? He's got to take Alexander on his own. He gives it to Lewis. Is it a double movement? He was held. He plays it. Penalty Queensland. Smart thinking from Lewis. He played it to the New South Wales player who didn't roll away from the ball after affecting the tackle. And Lewis's experience to the fore, he thought about the double movement and then his class and his brain worked over time. He said, no, I'll milk the penalty. The player who affected his tackle didn't get out of the way. Into, the, uh, into his lap, he played the ball and Bill Harrigan had no option but to award a penalty. A penalty. And after it, Walter made a few suggestions to the New South Wales defence as well. And there's another marvellous play from Steve Walters and a fine tackle from Ian Roberts in cover, but it wasn't good enough because... Well, Laurie Daly, the man there, penalised, not happy about it, but another good ruling from Bill Harrigan. Now, Meninga really has to kick this, I feel. As he attempts this goal, we'll take a break. Be back in a moment. You haven't missed any of the action here at Lang Park. 13 and a half minutes remaining. Queensland lead by six. 
This will be an eight-point buffer if Meninga can kick it. No goal. So New South Wales is still alive well and truly. Kick one more. And three were kickable. But he's had a marvellous game. And we're all one third football as Steve run off as Slum. Queensland leads six to nil. Check that six-point advantage. The long odds on favourites have got some work to do, New South Wales. There's plenty of time. Kevin Walters, Meninga. Pass around the corner, gone loose. This should be play on. If New South Wales came up with the ball, of course, but they didn't. So the scrum will pack down. So he should look worried, Tim Sheens. It's just been a, a half have looked like scoring is from a ball from Queensland. So what can their backs do? Well, soon. Mark. He's come on the field for the Blues. Fittler, big, strong young man, 10 short of the halfway. Few gaps up the middle, Lazarus. He's almost on the chalk at the halfway line. Well, who? Well, Daly will have to cut it up on his own. And then they throw it over the top. Who wants it? Larson will dive on it. Well, Queensland will eventually dive on the ball. New Wales are going backwards. Larson's hurt too. Lewis turns, tackled by Brad Fittler. Ten metres inside New South Territory. Khan. He gets it back to Walters. Kevin Walters, eight out from the 22-metre line. He'll play it to his brother, Stephen. And then to Gavin Allen, and he's just short of the quarter. Queensland need to control the football and they'll win the game. Martin Bellas over the advantage line. He's inside the 22. He's got it back to Langer, and he'll take the tackle. Now they're on the final one. Going to try a field goal. Well, Khan will have to kick it. He does so. And the race is on. Alexander's got it, and he's got a bit of room till he meets Mick Hancock. And he's tackled. Good kick from Khan. Now Johns. Reckon at the end of the game, the New South Wales backs are entitled to take the forwards pay. Met Arson. Ten and a half minutes to go. The chant come Queensland. Lazarus took that borderline. Ten short of the halfway. Now the runners come with the blocker. McGaw can't get the hands free, and now this is the final tackle. Here's Stewart. Daly's up flat. And that's a good kick. That'll find touch off the mound. Ten minutes remaining, Gene Miles. Can they hold on? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they can. They'll win this scrum and uh, you know, hopefully they'll just hit it up for a couple of them and, and Wally will drive it down. And uh, it's very important we keep them down in their, in their half and, and don't give away a silly penalty because New South Wales are using all their freshmen now and there are a couple of danger, dangerous individuals out there. All right, Langer feeds 10 metres out from the line. Out the back it goes to Hancock. And now he runs strong, he runs straight. Well, straight for him anyway. Even though there might have been a bit of 45 degrees in it. Mark Bagore coming back on for New South Wales. Oh, good running from Coyne over the advantage line. And New South Wales waited for him. Lost the ball. Crowd calling hit high. Looked legitimate tackle to me. Now, Daly, Grubber's in. Renouf should cover. And have a little sprint. Try a big one. He's lost. No, he hasn't. I thought for a moment he lost the football, but he did take the tackle. Allen into Sirenan. Also Lazarus. Langer. Out wide to Jackson having a gallop. Just short of the halfway. Guys on for Roberts. Eight and a half minutes to go. Meninga from dummy half. Queensland have two tackles left. Lewis gets the kick in. Alexander knocks it back. Langer's first there. Couldn't get him. Larson has chased all night. Has been a very, 
very memorable performance from this young man, Gary Larson, a man from central Queensland who went to North Sydney about oh, what, a couple of knee operations and got his chance tonight with the kangaroo Bobby Lindner out and has made every post a winner. Now Roach wrapped up Larson again in to do the tackling along with Kevin Walters. McGaw. He's tackled and almost threw a pass on the way to the deck. And they were too slow. New South Wales, Queensland have got the football. Says it all, doesn't it? Now Lewis. Away it goes to Walters. And he'll take the tackle. There are seven minutes and 30 seconds remaining. Coin. Tackled by Guy and Lazarus. To Walters at dummy half, to Gavin Allen. Well tackled by Geyer and Sirenen. Who's to hit it up now? Martin Bella through Langer. Now Walters. Dummies inside to Hancock. And he's found a bit of room. Inside the 22 on the final tackle. Lewis calls for it. Langer goes. Walters. Little grubber. And Alexander will take it five, ten metres out from his own line. Kevin Walters has been sharp since he's come on. Andrew Eddinghausen into Walters. They bump. <laughs> Queensland keep their straight line of defence. Here comes Guy. Larson met him. Larson met him. <laughs> Kevin Allen gave his weight. Perhaps a hint of a smile on Graham Lowe's face. Six, four, six minutes, 14 seconds away could be a, a Johns, real big smile. Chrissy Johns at the 22 metre line. Two exhausted teams out here. Roach. Six minutes remaining. Now McGaw's going to be ready for the chase downfield. Stewart calls for it. It's a big kick. It's a huge kick. It might even run dead. Renoff is going to have to hurry. McGaw's put him down. Someone better get the dummy half. It'll be Meninga to give it to Khan. Willie Khan, eight short of the 22 metre line. Now Walters, that's Kevin, gives it to Stephen. He's had a strong game. Queensland controlling the football. The kicking game all important. Lewis calls for it. Alexander. He's had 10 metres plenty. Here's Johns. He tried to put Eddinghausen away. Still a chance. E.T. with space. Not anymore. In the final five minutes, Queensland leads 6-0. Stewart. Gaia. He's lost the football. It's knocked back, he's ruled it's knocked on. But there was the big hit in there from Gavin Allen, I feel it was. Gene Miles. Yes, mate, that, that, was, uh, that was Gavin's big hit. He put on um, put on a big rock down it and did cough the ball up. But there's some pretty anxious scenes down here on the sidelines and uh, Tim Sheens is, uh, as we go back to the play, mate. Will he come? Lewis is on his inside. He's going to try and make it. He's thrown it. Lewis has lost it. New South Wales ball. And there are players strewn all over the park. Now O'Connor, Renouf will have to get him. He tackled him well. Four minutes remaining. Here's Brat Fiddler. And not a single New South Wales person accelerating to get with Fiddler. So now it goes to Lazarus. He's at the halfway mark. Queensland have to defend. Lewis limping back to position. Here comes Sirenen. Can he break them? No. Elias, now to Stewart, and the kick's over the top, and here's Alexander. The bounce won't go his way. Queensland come up with the ball. There's no way New South Wales deserve the bounce. If Queensland don't win this to show how unjust football games can be. Walters, stay in the field of play. Oh, he went into touch. And that's not good football. Kevy Walters on the first tackle. New South Wales to come up with a loose head and feed us. Three minutes remaining. 
Safety there was the name of the game. So Queensland will be called on to defend. New South Wales are going to throw everything at him. Here comes Mark McGaw. And it goes to Eddinghausen. And he's lost it. That's a knock on. He's ruled play on. Daly. Standing in tackles. Still going Laurie Daly. Two and a half minutes to go. Can Queensland hold on? Here's Fittler on the 22 metre line. Here's Elias. Queensland are tired. They're waiting for the Blues to run and Surinam does exactly that. Now with Elias. Over to Stewart. Alexander. Daly kicks ahead and he scored. Laurie Daly's in. It's going to get down to the kick. Laurie Daly has scored the try. Queensland leads six points to four. Two minutes remaining and the kick is going to tell the tale, I'd say, for a draw or a Queensland victory, Andrew Slack. There's Mick O'Connor's a slow old walk over to the where Laurie Daly has scored the try. He knows the pressure's on him, but Laurie Daly, well deserved. He's been one of New South Wales' best, I think, he and Ettinghausen out wide. They haven't had much support. There's a little chip, a good option around Hancock. Hancock just didn't have the time to chase. Daly straight into it. And Daly, good performance considering he's been out for four or five weeks through that cheekbone injury incurred here against the Broncos. Well, Daly, always thinking, played his heart out, forced the ball, it gets down to Michael O'Connor's kick. How would you like to be Michael O'Connor? Well, you're bearing in mind the fact that Michael O'Connor no longer kicks regularly for Manly Warringah with Matthew Ridge, who'd kick his mother for two points. Uh, Mick O'Connor's second stringer, so he's now not um, used to this pressure, I guess. He's done it plenty, plenty of times before, but uh, it just adds another dimension. Well, the crowd won't give him any peace, but he's a, he's a professional, Michael O'Connor. Everyone sits, waits, and watches. I don't think Queensland deserve to lose it. Oh, no way. Or even draw it. No way do they deserve to lose it. Do I need to mention that you picked Queensland to win by two points, AT? You can mention it. I love it. Sounds great. But there are 19 seconds remaining. Queensland must kick off. And New South Wales must do something in the countdown of the last 10 seconds. That's a penalty. He's kicked it dead on the floor. It's well, not all over, Graham Lowe. Unfortunately for you, it's not all over yet. Mick O'Connor will get his other chance. He's walking up to halfway. The rule, of course, Mel Meninga, most people realise that when you kick it out of touch on the full, it's a penalty. When you kick it over the dead ball line, it's the same story. That's exactly what Malcolm Meninga did. Bill Harrigan has ruled, quite rightly ruled, that it's a penalty to New South Wales. Last throw of the dice. Unbelievable finish to this Winfield State of Origin match at Lang Park. Queensland have to sweat it out again. And O'Connor hasn't been given the duty. It's been Alexander. There's the replay. The ball over the dead ball line. The flags look quite still, but there is a bit of breeze. And, of course, the, the fact that Meninga was able to kick that ball over the touchline indicates that breeze is slight. The slight breeze is with Queensland. So... Conversely, Alexander kicking into it. It would be a one heck of a goal if he can manage it. Can Alexander get the distance, Gene Miles? Well, Gino probably can't hear. He's probably got his fingers in his ears. That's what confronts the New South Wales fullback. It's not got the legs. Lewis takes the ball and he'll take the tackle. Not voluntarily. That's it. Queensland have won it, but by golly, did they have to sweat it out in the end? Queensland defeat New South Wales. The odds on favourites are gone. Queensland win it by six points to four. Winfield man of the Grant. match, Wally Lewis. He's back to Lane Park. 
he's back to the hello turf which he's owned through a decade in the 80s and now into the 90s well at the beginning of the game i suggested canonization if he if he pulled out the miracle well i don't know if there is a saint wall there has been there's probably one now outstanding effort and there's the brains trust graham Lowe. what a fabulous effort from graham Lowe. well graham Lowe, can that man coach or what he won a grand final with north in 1980 as the underdog he won a test against australia here in 83 with the kiwis he got a bloke out of reserve grade in sydney and olsen Filipino, who won the man of the match and he's done it again queensland were given no hope there was ten and a half start new south wales threes on he could do anything you like but once again led by lewis and meninga langer played well elias has come here so many times and tasted defeat martin bella led from the front what a moment for graham lowe he said when he was appointed that he would be the proudest man in the side that it was an honor it wasn't an appointment it was an honor to coach queensland and he has done it gary larson uh, absolutely magnificent performance andrew slack well i think the key was nobody performed badly for queensland every single player did what was expected of them Except for that first 10 minutes, I don't know if they were overawed or whatever, but they overcame that, the si sign of a side with character. And in the coaching stakes, will Graham Lowe knock out win over 10 Sheens? Big Martin Bella still sprinting. Lewis, the legacy of another Lang Park battle. One that he has led. He didn't have the ammunition of Storm and Norman, but he's come home with the bacon. Andrew G played magnificently with the tackling. Stephen Walters, unbelievable. Lewis attracts attention wherever he goes. They said he was gone. But let's go down to Sean Lawson and with him one little halfback, he's pretty happy. Alfie, Alfie Langer, they said Queensland couldn't do it tonight. Well, that's what they said, and we just showed them tonight how, how good we could play, and it was a very determined effort by all the blokes, and uh, it was great to see that kick miss at the end, and. Uh, you know, a, a great win. So much for the New South Wales international pack. Yeah, well, you know, they were proud of that, but our forwards just, you know, just went out and did the job they were supposed to do, and uh, it was a great effort by them. The old form, the old firm of Meningi assault, Wally came to the fore once again. Yeah, well, I was happy with the game tonight. We just, uh, we probably could have done a few things better, but uh, as I said before, it was a great win, and, uh, you know, the crowd's showing it now. It was a very dull game, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a very fast game, and uh, certainly, uh, Kept going from end to end. Magnificent win for Queensland, Alfie. Congratulations. Thanks, mate. Alan Langer off to share in the celebrations. And some people who can take due praise from this effort, the Queensland selectors. Question marks over Steve Jackson, over Mike McLean, over Gary Larson, even over Willie Kahn and Paul Hoff. They've all performed outstandingly. And there's a man who perhaps led Martin Bella. Yeah, Kevin Walters, when he came on, he did the job. Gary Larson reminded me of Cole Weiss, another central... Queensland lock of the, the 60s and 70s. Played outstandingly tonight, Gary Larson, particularly in the first half. And Stephen Walters, Michael McLean, did what was asked. Mel Meninga, as we said, did the grafting work. Isn't it amazing, Andrew, when the adrenaline is pumping? If you got Mel Meninga out there in the first five minutes and said, kick this over the dead ball line on the fall, I guarantee he couldn't have done it. But pumped up, he just hit that ball and a fair dink and flew it. It flew like a Greg Norman seven iron, virtually over the dead ball line. But Queensland have once again defied the odds. And like Tim Sheens and his side are going to have to sit back and have a hard look. Let's hear some more interviews with Sean Lawson. God must have been on our way, so he missed both of them. And uh, you had to get involved more in the second half. Was that Lowy's uh, comment? Yeah, mate, yeah. He sort of said to me and Willie, sort of go in looking for more balls. So, I mean, we had just had to sort of take a bit more work right off the forwards. Yeah, he's did a great job. Congratulations. Thanks, Gino. All right. Michael Hancock there with Gene Miles. I didn't know Gene was an interviewer. Slackies, eh? Man of many talents, Gene Miles. But um, uh, he'd be happy interviewing his uh, his colleagues tonight. Isn't it astonishing how, how Queensland can just do it at, at Lang Park? I, you know, I'm only too happy to accept my misinterpretation of what might have happened tonight. But it just looked far and away too strong the New South Wales outfit. But they lifted head, heads and shoulders above what perhaps we've seen it of the the individuals in the past. Steve Walters, for me. Uh, you know, how can they bring Kerrod back in the next game? They can't. Sorry, Kerrod, they can't. Steve Walters tonight was, was magical. He got his chance, and he's, he's made the most of it. 
I'm just wondering what New South Wales do with their team. They might have to look at changes, Andrew. Those forwards tonight, they didn't lift a finger. The backs carted it up under pressure. They stood around with hands on their hips. I know it's smart to say after the game that Queensland have won, but we both looked at each other 10 minutes into the second half and just went, we think they're in trouble. They are in trouble throughout the game. And if there wasn't for the brilliance of Des Hasler and the backs, they would have got beaten by more. Here's Sean Lawson with Wally Lewis. Wally, Queensland done, has done it once more. Yeah, mate, it's a lot of fun uh, for the Queensland guys, but uh, they play with a hell of a lot of spirit. On the, you know, if you have a look at the sides on paper, they're probably a 10, 12-point better side than us, but you just can't put a value on spirit in a, in a side of football. A bit of claret coming out there, the least of your worries at the moment? Oh, I'll, I'll have a sore head in the morning, mate, but I won't really care. When we look at the, uh, the newspapers, it'll have us uh, winning the football match, and uh, that's all I care about, mate. And just being back part of that Queensland side again, tremendous feeling. Graham Lowe as coach, it must be a moment for him as well. Yeah, mate, if you had have seen the look on that bloke's face after the game, it, you just, you know, you, you couldn't put it in a description in words. I mean, he's, he's a guy, uh, he's a lovable sort of a bloke. I've known him for, uh, since 1979. I've rated him uh, the equal of any coach. I put Wayne, Wayne Bennett in front of him at one stage in the coaching ranks, but Graham's uh, probably level the, the series now uh, in, the, in the coaching ranks, but uh, a magnificent coach. and. You know, he, he didn't know many of the blokes in the team. He knew about two or three of them, and to, to work wonders inside six days with the team speaks volumes for his ability as a rugby league coach. Well done, Wally. Congratulations, mate. Thank you. All right, we'll take a commercial break. In just a moment, as we watch the Emperor of Lang Park leave to a standing ovation. And Graham Lowe picked it pretty well before the match. He said, Wally may not have the speed of foot of pass, but he's got the speed between the ears. And didn't he show it today? It was... It was just a very common sense approach by the senior players, led by Wally, by the Meningas, by the Jacksons. Cliff Lyons must have nightmares about Lewis. Every time he plays against Wally Lewis, he has a shocker. Yeah, he wasn't at the races, was he? Just wasn't at the races today. And the Queensland dressing room, Steve Renoff got a touch of the ball. Well, you wouldn't think they played 80 minutes in the toughest ballpark in the world. Andrew G tackled his heart out all night. Paul Hoff's in a bit of pain. That'll be eased now by the victory. And we'll take this commercial break and spare our throats for a while, and then we'll come back with more from Lang Park. Giving it grand. Well, Andrew, Wally Lewis won his eighth Man of the Match award tonight. And at the presentation, he spoke to Sydney's Darrell Eastlake. And did Wally really think deep down that Queensland could win this game tonight? We knew that we were capable of winning it. It was just a matter of whether we were ready to apply ourselves on the night. And... Uh, 80 minutes after the, the full-time Hooter starts, now we know that we did want to apply ourselves very much, and that was something that Graham drummed into us. He wasn't going to let us go out on the football field, anything less than 100% committed. Well, Wally, I know that, you know, a man of the match award, any one of the players out there could have got it. I mean, it was just a fantastic performance from the whole team, but we just thought such a special moment for you. You almost went over yourself, the Meninga combination. It was just a magnificent night for Queensland once again. And the record for the Blues since 87 haven't won here. $1,000 from the Winfield Company. Congratulations. And I'm sure if anybody's a real fair and rugby league fan, they'd love to see you get this tonight.